Good morning, class. We are looking at statistic practice test number three, module three, covering chapter six and seven. Here's chapter seven. Estimating parameters and determining sample sizes. Answer the following, true or false, the confidence interval estimate of the population mean is constructed around the sample mean. The answer is yes. And the formula is X bar plus minus E. Where sigma of X bar is sigma over square root of N and E is Z alpha over two or simply Z sigma over square root of N. In other words, to find the confidence interval, you start from some point, in this case, X bar, known as the point estimate for the mean. And then you go to the right and left, you make up an interval by this much E, which is Z sigma over square root of N. Estimation means assigning values to a population parameter based on the value of a sample statistic. Generally speaking, we are looking for population parameter. We don't have access to that. We have to start somewhere. We start from here, a sample statistic, and we make up a confidence interval. The confidence level is denoted by one minus alpha times 100%, simply one minus alpha. The maximum error, also known as margin of error of the estimate for mu, population mean, based on known sigma, population standard deviation is E equal to Z. We pick up this one from the Z table, Z alpha over two sigma over square root of N. The parameters of the T distribution is only DF, degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom. What criteria are required to apply the T distribution to make a confidence interval for mu? The sample must be a simple random sample, number one. Number two, either the sample is from a normally distributed population or N is large. How large? N is larger than or equal to 30. Number three, population standard deviation. Sigma is unknown. When sigma is missing, we use the T distribution. So, Sample statistic is used as a point estimate, which is a specific numerical value estimate of a parameter. A point estimate is a single value or point used to approximate a population parameter. Example, the sample proportion P hat is the best point estimate for the population proportion P. Confidence interval. We can use a point estimate to construct a confidence interval estimate of the true value of a population parameter. So T distribution uses this type of table. This is uh, a table I wanted to show you. We find the T values for T for a T distribution with a given sample size and a confidence level, okay? So confidence level is smacked in between. And then one minus alpha, okay? 
is the confidence level. The tails are alpha. The two of them add up to alpha. Each side is alpha over two. And in order for you to do the reading from the table, of course, you can use technology. The left column, DF, degrees of freedom. And the top gives you area in one tail. In case we are dealing with the hypothesis testing, left tail test or right tail test, or it gives you area in two tail tests or the concept of a confidence interval. As an example, to be find the value for T for a T distribution with a sample size of 20 and a confidence level of 95%. Let's see how we do that. So first and foremost, for this question, we have 95% here in the middle. And the tails would add up to only 5%. That means these two are 5%. This one is half of that. 2.5%, this one is half of that. 2.5%, just to give you an idea how the confidence interval works. Now, this is a portion of a table I showed you in the previous page because we don't have enough rooms. Sample size is 20. Remember, the very first thing is that you look for the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is N minus one. So N is 20. Degrees of freedom is 19. So in the left column, you look for number 19. This is 95%. That means the two tails have an area of 5% or one tail has an area of 2.5%. So this is the number you look for. And over here, you look for area in one tail of 0.025 or two tails of 0.05. And the corresponding answer is 2.093, which means this is negative 2.093, this is positive 2.093, so t is plus minus 2.093. This is how you would read the table. T table or T score. Find the value for T for a T distribution with a sample size of 30 and a confidence level of 90%. So right now for this one, you look at this number and you say degrees of freedom is N minus one or 29. So you look up the number 29 here. And it says 90%. So let me change this to 90%. So if the confidence interval is 90%, that means the two tails add up to the rest of it, one minus 90%. That means this one and this one, they add up to 10% or 0.1. Each one is 5% or 0.05. So you're looking for 0.05 in one tail or 0.1 in two tails. Put these two together results in this number. So this is negative 1.699. This is positive 1.699. So T has a plus minus value of 1.699. So that's as far as the table is concerned. So everybody should be able to read the table. If you want to go with technology, for example, TI, we use second variables, inverse T, and we put two things the left area and degrees of freedom. So for example, for this one, the left area is 10% divided by 2.05. Degrees of freedom is 30 minus one or 29. So inverse T area to the left, degrees of freedom. And it gives you the answer of course, with a lot more decimals because that's technology. So with three decimals, we have this number that was mentioned. And of course, a lot more. 
if you uh, you want to use others, for example, online, you may use this one. You can find it under the module zero of uh, my open map. You can use this one. And there are many more. If you're using Excel, <clears throat> we use T dot inverse and we put the left area on degrees of freedom. So I'm showing you how to use the technology as well. Ultimately, you want to use the technology for a, a better result, a more precise result. Find the critical chi-square value for 20 degrees of freedom when the area to the left is 0.01. Find the critical chi-square value for n equals 30 when the area is area to the right is 0.9. I want to explain the concept. So the chi-square distribution must be used to calculate the calculate the confidence intervals for variances and standard deviations. The chi-square variable is similar to the t variable in that its distribution is a family of curves based on the number of degrees of freedom. The symbol for chi-square is chi-square, the Greek letter chi, pronounced chi, a chi-square variable cannot be negative and the distributions are skewed to the right. So I want you to see first the graph starts from zero, goes to infinity, the total area under the curve is one and all values are positive starting from zero and then the rest of them are positive. And uh, when we want to read this, the part of the table, we need the to know the degrees of the freedom and area to the right, okay? So that's what we need, everybody. We need the area to the right. So when we go back to part A, Tony, degrees of freedom is given, so you don't have to do uh, N minus one anymore. Degrees of freedom is Tony, so in this column, we should look for Tony. and. Area to the left is 0 0.01. This is the given information, but to read, we need the area to the right. We need degrees of freedom and area to the right. So degrees of freedom is fine. If area to the left is 0 0.01, remember the total area represents probability and it's equal to one. So area to the right must be one minus that, which makes it 0 0.99. So in this column, we, we look for the number 20. So we need more. So we find number 20. And up here, we look for 0.99 because we want the area to the right. Put them together and you get this answer. And we write. We can simply write the answer is 8.260 or you can say chi-squared when the left area is 0 0.01 or chi square when the right area is 0 0.99 is this number 8.260 again i'm showing you how to read the table for this case n is 30 we need degrees of freedom n minus 1 so the degrees of freedom is 29 an area to the right is given. You don't have to come up with that. So in this column, we need number 29. So we go down and we find 29. And up here, we need 0.9. So we put these two together and it results in this number. And the answer is simply 19.768. You could write it as follows. Chi squared when the right area is 0.9 equals to the chi-squared when the left area, we, we are really interested in that, is, is 0.1 and it's So pretty straightforward, everybody.
reading the chi square. Now there are online calculators. They will give you the answer. Again, you can find them under the module zero of mom. I suggest you look at it. A statistician is interested in estimating at a 95% con confidence level, the mean number of houses sold per month by all real estate agents in a large city. It is known that the population standard deviation is 1.9. How large a sample should be taken so that the estimate is within 0 0.65 of the population mean? So what is given? Let's take it from the top, 95% confidence interval. Or you can say confidence level is 95%. Population standard deviation sigma is 1.9. And N is missing how large is the sample when the estimate is within 0.65, E is 0 0.65. So this is the given, everybody. So here's the formulas we should know. If you, you can uh, pick them up from the formula sheet. Confidence interval has the formula of X bar plus minus E. Sigma of X bar is sigma over square root of N. E is Z alpha over two sigma over square root of N. Now, this formula, everybody, if you square both sides and solve for n, you get this one. So square this side, this becomes e squared, this becomes e squared, this is sigma squared, this is n, put the n here, e down here, and you get this. I hope you can see that from here, we can get to n. This is basic math. Solve for n, square both sides, and then solve for n. This is what you get, and you should always round up. So we are dealing with a 95% confidence interval. It's one of those common ones when we deal with the Z score. This number is negative 1.96. This is 1.96. And you're just going to plug this in. Or with a 95% confidence interval, you use Z equals 1.96. By the way, whether you put positive or negative makes no difference because it's being raised to the power of 2. So plug it into this formula. And that's why you write the given. 1.96 times 1.9 over 0.65 to the second power. Be very careful with your calculation. Make sure you show your work. And then this must be rounded up regardless. Regardless of what this is, 32.1 or 32.9 makes no difference. The answer is 33 because this is the minimum number we need, and it has to be a discrete value, has to be a whole number. So this is because it has to be a whole number. Now, uh, find the 95% confidence interval if the mean for such sample size is 3.4, X bar plus minus E. So X bar is 3.4. And E was given as 0.65. X bar plus minus E, that means you can write it like that, or you can write it like that. Pay attention to the way they want you to write it. This, the, the two mean the same thing. It, this means mu is between X bar minus E and X bar plus E. And we get mu between 2.75 and 4.05. So the way you write it is extremely important. And the way they want you to write it, just pay attention to the way they are asking you to write. So we are 95% confident that the true population mean is somewhere between the two numbers. That's the concept. A random sample of 20 female members of a health club showed that they spend on average 4.5 hours per week doing physical exercise with standard deviation of 0 0.75 hours. Assume the time spent on exercise for all female members is approximately normally distributed. What is the value of the point estimate of the population? 
So what is given? We are dealing with word problems. What is given? Let's look at it from the scratch. Of course, ND, it says so. Sample size of Tony, N is Tony. Now, the average is 4.5. When the average pertains to the population, it's mu. But this pertains to the sample of Tony only. So this is X bar. And the same thing with the standard deviation with when it pertains for the population to the population. Somehow it says all that sigma, but this pertains to the sample of Tony. Therefore it's S. And so those are the given. By definition, point estimate of the population mean is the sample mean. So the point estimate of mu is X bar. And we know X bar is equal to 4.1. Construct the 98% confidence interval for the mean time spent on physical exercise of all such females. Well, the formula sheet, you have it. We still have X bar plus minus E. However, instead of sigma of X bar, we have S of X bar because we are dealing with the sample, S over square root of N. E, instead of Z, we use T, S over square root of N. So that's the formula. We use from the formula sheet. We want 98% confidence interval, which means alpha is 0 0.02, which means if you are looking at this, this is 98%. And the two tails, they add up to 2%. That means this is point. 0, 1, and so is this one. Each tail is 1%. That's why it's, it's, it's a good idea to uh, do the graph. So if n is 20, we need degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1 or 90. And you can look up the table, and it gives you plus minus 2.539. This comes from the table. We have seen how the table works. Uh, we're going to go with X bar plus minus E, meaning mu is between X bar minus E and X bar plus E, and E has this formula, everything that was mentioned here. So we have the X bar. We need to calculate the E, and we have the T. We have the S divided by square root of N. So into this formula, put this T at 2.539, S 0.75, and square root of N, which is 2. So plug in. And now the reason it doesn't make any difference, you put plus or minus, because you keep it the plus, and then this takes care of it. Plus minus E will take care of that plus minus. You put it into a calculator, you go with a bunch of decimals, this is what we get, and therefore, the answer is X bar, which is 4.5, minus this number, and X bar, which is 4.5, plus this number. So mu is between the two, 4.5 minus the number, 4.5 plus the number, and we get this one. This is plus everybody. So the 98% confidence interval for the mean is 4.0742 and 4.9258. So we're 98% confident. The true population uh, mean 
for uh, uh, female members of that health club to uh, for exercise is this much. Let's do this by technology as well. So we go with the TI, for example, we put stat, tests, and we're gonna go with the T interval, and we're gonna put X bar S and the confidence level. So we put T interval, X bar is 4.5, S is 0.75. That's why it's important to write the given. N is 20, and the C level, we want 98% confidence. And so when you put it in, take a look at what you get. Look at this number that we calculated. Mu is between these two numbers. And this is from technology. And of course, this is more precise for a simple reason because they don't use this as the answer for the T, but rather closer. They don't even use this one for E, but with more decimals. Okay, and then do the, they do the wrong. Either way is fine, as long as you understand the process language. Out of 500 randomly selected adults, 300 said they were in favor of the death penalty for a, for a person convicted of murder. What is the value of point estimate of the population proportion? So first, let's see what's given. You're dealing with the binomial distribution because there are two outcomes. You're either for or against this topic. So N 500, X, lowercase X is 300. And the point estimate for P is P hat. P has the formula capital X over capital N. P hat has the formula lowercase x over lowercase n. That's why you write the given 300 over 500, 3 over 5, or 0 0.6. What is the 95% confidence interval for the population proportion? Here's the formulas similar to what we have seen for the mean. The confidence interval is p hat plus minus e. Mu of p hat is p. Sigma of p hat squared of pq over n. If p and q are missing, you go with p hat q hat over n square root of that. So e becomes z square root of p hat q hat over n. Remember, when we go with the z, we are approximating binomial distribution by normal distribution. And we never ever use T here because T is an approximation of Z. And one approximation is bad enough. You don't want to go with two by using S ever, never, so Z. All right, so uh, what do we need? Uh, we need to uh, write the information. We have a 95% confidence interval. So that means we are going to use this formula to calculate the E. And to do so, we need the Q hat, where P hat is 3 over 5. Q hat is 2 over 5 or 0.4, 1 minus. Uh, the 95% confidence interval gives rise to the value of Z4 plus minus 1.96. It's one of those common ones, everybody. So Z is 1.96, it's a common value, you should know that. And then P hat 0.6, Q hat 0.4, and N 500. Put it into a calculator with a bunch of decimals. Results in 0 0.0429, so p hat plus minus e. So p hat is 0 0.6, subtract this number from it and add this number to it. This will result in 0 0.5571 and this results in 0 0.6429. That means we are 95% confident that the true population proportion 
should be somewhere in between. Let's look at technology. So here's the calculator uh, for the confidence interval. We're going to go with one proportion, stat test, one proportion Z interval, one proportion Z interval, enter X and M confidence level. So one proportion uh, Z interval, X is 300, N is 500, confidence level of 95% or 0.95. And look at the answer. If we go with the fourth one, zero will change to one. So, so far, so good. And the fourth one, as you can see, they are the same within four decimal places. This is done using the table. This is done using technology. How large a sample is needed to be 99% confident that the margin of error is 0 0.025 for percentage of golfers that are left-handed if we assume that 15% of the golfers are left-handed based on a previous study. Uh, first, what is given 99% confidence level with the E, margin of error of 0 0.025. Then I want you to look at this formula that we had from before, and this formula and this formula. Now, if you look at this formula, this one, raise both sides to the second power. You get E squared, and this one is Z squared, P hat, Q hat over N. Put the N here, E squared down here, you get this formula. In other words, solve for N. First, raise this to the power of two, then interchange N and E. I want to quickly show you, so just in case the elementary algebra, this becomes E squared, the right side. I'm going to just put Z instead of Z, alpha over to Z squared, P hat, Q hat, over N. And I hope... You can see the answer. You can, to solve for N, you can interchange these two. So that's what we are going to use. P hat is 0.15 for part A. Confidence interval of 99%. So you have actually, I have it for you. So, so you have 99% here, which means each tail is 1% divided by 2.005. This tail, 0.005. And that is also 99% confidence level. It's a common one. And you can look it up, even the table has it, negative 2.575, positive 2.575. So that comes from the table. And when I want to put this here, I have the Z, I have the E, I have the P hat, I don't have the Q hat, which is one minus P hat. So 0 0.8. Five, 1 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.85. Now this formula is ready to be tackled. Plug in, plug in. The Z value, the P hat, Q hat, and the E value. And put it into a calculator very carefully, and it gives you this answer. Now, this must be a whole number. That's why regardless of this one, 0 0.6 or 0 0.1, whatever. This goes up because we are not rounding. We are rounding up regardless. Rounding up regardless. Because that means this is the minimum number we need, okay? Now, assume that we have no prior information suggesting a possible value for the sample proportion. Meaning class, I don't know what's P hat. How would you calculate this? Uh, when we don't know what's p hat, we assume 
they are both the same 0.5. So P hat and Q hat, we are assuming to be 0.5. The confidence level is still the same, 99%, and E is 0.025, still the same. So what happens to this formula? If you replace the P hat with 0.5 and Q hat with 0.5, their product becomes 0.25. So in this case, the formula, P hat, Q hat, the product is 0.25. That's how we arrive at it. And this is the most conservative in estimate. And how do you know that? This will be the largest possible number. So if for any reason, this number is less than that, we've made a mistake somewhere. Must be large. So over here, we know P hat is 0.15. Over here, we don't. We go with the worst case scenario with 0.5, the most conservative estimate, the most conservative estimate. So replace the Z, the same number. So you put the same numbers here. Instead of 0 0.15 and 0 0.85, you put 0 0.25. The product of these two, you put the product of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Use a calculator, gives you this number. And as, an, as I said, it doesn't matter what decimal this is, do you round up? So the answer, the way you report this, this is the minimum number we need. We report N as a whole number, 2,653. Always round up. Last question, given n is 30, x bar is 80, 0.5, s is 4.6, assume normal population, find 98% confidence interval or population variance and standard deviation. You normally have to write the given, the given is given to you symbolically, you don't have to worry about that. This is where chi-square is used. So let's remind you of the formula that you can find in the formula sheet. The confidence uh, interval, for sigma squared, which is the variance, is n minus 1 s squared over chi squared of the right, less than sigma squared, less than n minus 1 s squared. The numerators are the same. This uses in the denominator chi squared of the right. This uses chi squared of the left. That's all you have to calculate. For sigma, the population standard deviation, you just take a root. So this is the one you really calculate. This one, just take a root, big deal. So, What are we uh, dealing with here? We are dealing with chi-squared looking like this. We have a 98% confidence interval. So right here we have one minus alpha as 98%. Degrees of freedom is 30 minus one, N minus one and one minus 0.98 is 0.02. What do we mean by that? So this is 98% in the middle. And the two tails, they add up to 0 0.02. Each tail is 0 0.01. And remember, chi-squared has only positive values. It goes from 0 to infinity. I should say non-negative because 0 is included. All right. So what comes next for to find chi squared of the to find the value of chi squared you need two things you need degrees of freedom in both cases this one and this one is 29 so we have degrees of freedom we also need the area to the right so for this one it's very easy the area to the right is given as 0.01 so locate in this column the degrees of freedom of 29 and in this row, the area to the right of a 0.01, these two, 29.01. So what's the answer? 49.588. So this one is 49.588. Let me just put 49.588, the chi squared of the right. Now, to find chi squared of the left, I need the same degrees of freedom, so that's not a problem. 
but also I need the area to the right. The area to the right is one minus 0 0.01. This whole area is 0 0.99. So area to the left is 0 0.01 and area to the right is 0 0.99. So again, we locate two things, the same degrees of freedom, 29. At top row, look for this number, 0 0.99. Put them together, the answer is 14.257. So we have chi squared of the left, chi squared of the right. And into this formula, into this formula, we replace the n with 30 or we replace the n minus 1 with 29 s we replace it with 4.6 and square it chi squared of the right we find it to be this number 49.588 and the same thing the numerator is identical for this one the denominator replace the chi squared of the left with 14 0.257. So sigma squared is between these two numbers, put it into a calculator. So the 98% confidence interval for the population variance, population variance or variance is this. Sigma squared is between 12.3748 and 43.0413. So that's for the variance. What about the standard deviation? Just take a root. And the standard deviation, sigma, is between 3.5178 and 6.5606. So we are 98% confident that the true variance is between these two numbers and the true population variance and the true population standard deviation is between these two numbers.